In my last video, I talked about the EVO Star 90 from Skywatcher. This being a telescope that really surprised me with the excellent image quality it was able to provide. And from the moment I first looked through the telescope, I wanted to compare it to its cousin, the 102 mm SkyMax, also from Skywatcher, which I personally like very much. Well, hit that like button and subscribe and let's see together which of the two is the better entry-level telescope for planetary observations. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. Before we dive in and compare the two telescopes, I want to quickly highlight the differences between a refractor and a maxet of Cassegrain design. Telescopes in general work by gathering as much light as possible and focusing it on a single point from where the used eyepiece or accessory can take over and bring that focused image to your eye. Telescopes of a refractor design do this by passing the light through a convex shaped lens or group of lenses at the front of the optical tube, also called the objective lens. This lens refracts and then focuses the light onto a single point at the back of the optical tube from where the eyepiece or accessory takes over. Currently, there are two main types of refractor designs that are very popular with hobby astronomers, achromatic and apochromatic refractors. Achromatic refractors use objective lenses that feature multiple elements capable of bending the light in such a way that most wavelengths get focused in the same plane, reducing chromatic aberrations considerably. Chromatic aberrations being the Achilles heel of refractor telescopes. Apochromatic refractors take the good design of the achromats and improve it by employing objective lenses with different elements made out of low dispersion glass or ED glass. This allows for the red, green and blue wavelengths of light to all focused in the same plane resulting in very sharp, contrast-rich images without any chromatic aberrations. By contrast, a maxed of Cassegrain telescope works by first refracting and then reflecting the light that gets captured by the telescope. At the front, it features a large concave corrector lens called corrector plate that focuses the light onto the primary mirror located at the back of the optical tube. From there, the light gets reflected back towards the secondary reflective surface situated at the front and in the middle of the corrector plate. From there, the light gets reflected a second time to the back of the optical tube and through a hole in the primary mirror. From there, the eyepiece or accessory takes over. If you are interested in learning more about how the different types of telescopes work, I encourage you to check out my video Understanding Telescopes. I leave a link in the description below. All right, now that we know how these two types of telescopes work, it's time to compare the EVO Star 90 refractor to the SkyMax 102 Mac. Let's start with the specs. The aperture is straightforward, it's in the name of each telescope. So 90 mm for the EVO star and 102 mm for the SkyMax. Focal length and f ratio. Here we have 910 mm focal length for the f10.1 EVO star and 1300 mm focal length for the 12.7 SkyMax. This means two things. First, the SkyMax will have a narrower field of view, so you need to keep this in mind if you want to observe DSOs with it. And second, you can reach higher magnifications more easily with the SkyMax since you don't require very short focal length eyepieces that might present compromises regarding the eye relief, for example. This brings me to the maximum theoretical magnification for these telescopes. It's 180 for the EVO star and 204x for the SkyMax. 
Keep in mind though that these values apply only when experiencing perfect seeing conditions. More realistically are magnifications of 150 or 170 X. The light gathering capacity is 170 times for the EVO star and 210 times for the SkyMax, both compared to the light gathering capacity of the naked eye. And lastly, we have the resolving capacity of 1.28 arc seconds for the EVO star and 1.35 arc seconds for the SkyMax. This tells you how far two points of light need to be apart for your eye to be able to distinguish them as separate sources of light when looking through the telescope. So the smaller the value is, the better. Even with its small aperture, the EVO star is still the bigger and heavier telescope out of the two. That's because of the thicker front lens and the longer optical tube. If you factor in the weight of the mount, then the EVO star on the EQ2 weighs more than double than the SkyMax on the AZ Pronto mount, while the mid-size EVO star on the EQ2 mount is by no means a heavy and bulky telescope in a general sense. The SkyMax on the AZ Pronto mount is literally a lightweight travel telescope where the OTA or optical tube assembly fits in your carry-on luggage without a problem should you want to take it on a plane with you. Here I must mention that part of why the EQ2 mount is so heavy, it's because it's an equatorial mount, which is a bit more complex than a simple alt azimuth mount like a AZ Pronto mount. It also works with counterweights to balance out the OTA, so that adds some weight as well. If you are to ignore the mount head for a bit, then both mounts feature the same sturdy design, only with the EQ2 being like 20% or so bigger. In terms of accessories, both telescopes come with almost the same basic accessories in the box. A 10 and a 25 mm eyepiece and a 90 degree one and a quarter inch mirror diagonal. On top of that, the EVO star also comes with a 2X barrel lens. As for the finder scope, the SkyMax includes a red dot finder, which I prefer to the 6x30 optical finder scope of the EVO star. Build quality wise, both telescopes are on the same level. While they might not be premium telescopes, both are sturdy and well put together with only minor shortcomings. Like some glue residues left behind from the manufacturing process on the SkyMax's OTA, or the use of cheap hard plastics that scratch easily on the dew shield and objective housing of the EVO star. But this is only secondary stuff. The most important thing being the quality of the views these telescopes deliver. So to assess the viewing experience with these, I've tested them on multiple occasions under bottle four skies with good seeing conditions. The eyepieces I selected for the test were a 9mm D-Light and a 24mm pen optic, both from Teleview. Using premium eyepieces allowed me to eliminate any bottlenecks cheaper eyepieces might introduce to the system. Regarding the actual viewing experience, both telescopes come with their strengths and weaknesses. Where the SkyMax produces bright, sharp and contrast-rich views, the EVO star manages to squeeze in a bit more brightness and offer overall sharper views. It's not like the SkyMax isn't sharp, it's still one of the sharpest telescopes I've used so far. But the EVO star is a bit better in this regard. Not by much, I would say 10% or so better, but it's still noticeable nonetheless. Now, if you remember what I've told you earlier about the design of a Maxutov Cassegrain telescope, it's easier to understand where this difference in brightness and sharpness comes from. The main reason being the obstruction caused by the secondary reflective surface in the center of the corrector plate. This reduces the light gathering capacity of the telescope. This and the fact that the light has to be reflected 
two times before it reaches the eyepiece leads to a small decrease in image quality in the case of the SkyMax. On a refractor, the light travels straight to the back of the optical tube and can reach the eyepiece unhindered. And you can notice this on the EvoStar. But the EvoStar is not without fault. The biggest downside being the chromatic aberrations this telescope produces when pointed at very bright sources of light. It's not that visible when observing planets, but when I was observing stars and star clusters, the aberrations were much more present. The views through the SkyMax do not suffer from any noticeable aberrations at all, and this is immediately visible. The images produced by the SkyMax being much cleaner and with more natural colors. I would also encourage you to check out my full reviews of these two telescopes in order to learn more about them before making a purchase decision. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, in order to give you guys a better understanding of what different objects in the night sky might actually look like when viewed through these telescopes, I simulated the views with Stellarium. Please keep in mind that these are simulated views and not actual views of the night sky. Star and the SkyMax are excellent, easy to use telescopes and I had so much fun observing the night sky with them. Both have their strengths and weaknesses however, and which one you ultimately place first is up to you and your preferences. If you value portability combined with an aberration-free view with natural colors above anything else, then get the SkyMax. If sharpness and brightness is the most important thing to you and you don't necessarily need to fit the telescope in your carry-on luggage, then get the EvoStar. For me personally, the Mac is still the better choice. There is something about a telescope being this compact that can deliver such awesome views of the planets. I just love that thing. Alright, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video. 